are getting another little video producer dude says keep these things coming the people are loving them so like comment share do all that good stuff subscribe but here's what we're doing we're testing out some new products some we can show you some we can't we're gonna go out and do some casting and jigging we've been doing quite a bit of that but just because we don't have a camera in the boat doesn't mean we aren't doing it so we're gonna try to show you some different stuff maybe a little different take than what you're used to for some Lake Erie style jigging but I'm sure regardless of where you live these things work because if you don't do it you can't catch them on it so stick with us here jigging casting Lake Erie <laughs> love it weather's not so nice though give you a few little tips here out of the gate one of them is mono i don't know i hear a lot of different things whether it's you set the hook too quickly you know some guys will say that some guys will say that it moves the bait too much but if you're using mono out here for jigging you're generally going to get a lot more bites land a lot more fish now if we're in the trait river doing something different we've got a lot of current whole different ball of wax but generally we're using mono and as you can see high vis so we can kind of watch that line because when the water's like this, we especially as it gets cleaner, we don't like to fish right below the boat if we don't have to. What we're going to actually do is just like we were casting in the summertime, we're going to work it, cast out, and kind of let that work around and back. So if you got multiple guys in the boat, you know, have guys fish up and down, but work out the edges there, uh, it'll make a difference. There are some days that they just want that swing and you can't get them very good under the boat or you're catching them three to one out away from the boat. So different casts, different angles, more dangles, more fish. Here we are. You know, the thing about walleye fishing is we got a little fella here, but every fish can tell us a story. And if you look at that, that's a old uh, Z Man jerk shed. Just a little small walleye there, but we've got a three quarter ounce Moon Eye VMC jig. Got that sucker rigged up there. But here's the deal two fish and two casts, and we really started ripping it. That's what I was doing. Now, in the past, the last few days, if you did that, you weren't getting bit at all. So the thing is, is switch up your cadence. I kind of feel silly that I waited so long to do that. Again, could have been a little different area, but even though we had a paddle tail on the last one, we had a Z-Man minnows, but um, very durable. And ripping it is the key right now, even though that has not been. So who knows? Who knows? So in the boat, you know, we've got several forms of different boat control. We've got almost just kind of the per perfect drift right now with the wind. But as you have more or less wind, obviously you're going to have to change things up. So we've got the trolling motor up front that we can use to pull us when it's really, really flat calm. If it gets a little bit rougher and we get on some fish, we can put that down and spot lock and hold us right there. As we get in some of the shallower stuff, I've got twin 15 foot talons on the back. And so that'll hold me right in place. And that can be another form too, just a lot easier, a lot less uh, maintenance basically and then the last thing is just simply a drift bag you know if it picks up just a little bit we can throw that bag out and that can slow us down so the key to this is definitely boat control you know it just is crazy every day is so different fishing and my buddy's been jig fishing a lot more than i have and they're like man just this subtle almost dragging it like old school how we used to fish smallmouth and you know every one of these fish is just a tip as far as what to do and you can see that old z-man's uh, minnows you can see that they're painting my boat as well but in there really good and again same thing once we went to that little more off colored water again the paddle tail instead of the fork seems to be a little better we got that big old three-quarter ounce which is oversized because we're really kind of working it and this floats so it's a little bit different presentation but the other thing you want to do big time with the jig stuff is most guys around here, they drop it right over the side and absolutely you're going to catch some fish. But day in, day out, what you want to do is figure that out. Most of the guys like in the front or the rear of the boat, we're going to cast out this way and kind of call fish in the swing. So we're going to kind of just have her come around this way a little bit. And that's going to make a really big difference because it's not going to have the lure underneath the boat. We're going to be able to work a whole different presentation 
switch up your cadence. The cadence really is the key. It matters way more than the color. It's just like trolling crankbaits when I tell you guys, don't worry about the color. Yeah, color matters. But we've caught fish on several different things today. What matters is the cadence. If you do the right cadence with the wrong color, you're still gonna catch them. Right color, wrong cadence, no fish. So with the jig setups, you know, the rod and reel really is an important part of it. Obviously everybody has different budgets and tastes a little bit, but get the best rod that you can afford. You don't need to, I see guys that got hundred rods, just get one or two good ones. This is a G Loomis NRX, it's a 782. So that means it's six foot six. It's a fast action and it's a medium power. And you don't want them any stiffer than that because you just don't get as many bites and it's a lot harder to land them. And then the other thing that we kind of always talk about is the monofilament line and having a high vis one here. This is like six pound tests, you know, 11 thousandths, depending like on the line that you use is good for me. The other big thing that you don't want to overlook, this is a Shimano Vanford. It's a 2000 size, super light. You get a really nice rod in here. You don't want to go put a heavy reel on it. So it's super light. But the other reason I'm going with the 2000 where I normally use the 2500s is that reel will not take up as much line. So it forces you to fish slower. And most times when we're jig fishing, it's gonna be in the cold weather, at least for me, and I'm gonna probably work that thing too much. So slowing down, I make the reel do it by getting a smaller one. So the pattern is kind of continuing here, no net. And this water's kind of off colored with throw plastics, but really work on the plastic. We went back to a, a minnows, three inch minnows, and went with a white color because this water's getting kind of dirty. And look at this gobble, gobble. We have no net. Work with me, work with me, work with me. Oh, he's excited to see me. <laughs> he's excited. Kids, we're not gonna explain if you don't know, but gobble, gobble. So, you know, just hooked real good. So the kind of thing we do here, we're gonna get him out of the boat because he's making a mess. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you. Any rate, so we got a really big jig head and we're really working it. So normally a lot of this time of year, it's really a subtle deal, really working this thing really hard. And actually because we're in this little dingier water here where there seems to be the fish on the Mega Live, we're using that paddle tail. And it's amazing how much difference you actually feel on that thing, you know, going through the water compared to like the, the jerk shed that doesn't have that tail. But we're gonna clean ourselves and see if we catch another one because the fish are here. Yeah, uh, health, health class kids, health class. <laughs> They're super strong. I don't know how many fish we got on this thing, but you can see that literally they bit me off. Cameraman said that yeah, wasn't a bite. It was. They bit me off. So we snuck out after a guide trip today and we got about an hour or two in a fishing because we got a big blow coming. So hopefully you can utilize some of these tips that I've had to learn the hard way. So a lot of times you have to have not success in order to know what to do. And hopefully these tips help you learn how to catch more walleyes on the jig. Because some of them are kind of conventional, like me.